I'm here in Southern California at the Vision Miner headquarters, and this is the brand new printer, the 22 IDEX V3. My name's Jim, and this is the Edge of Tech. So Vision Miner had me come out to do a first look of the brand new 22 IDEX V3. This thing is not even unwrapped yet. We just took it off the crate. So I'm gonna bring Rob in. He's the chief operating officer here. We're gonna get this thing unpacked and take an in-depth look at the 22 IDEX V3. So I'm here with Rob. He's the COO of Vision Miner, and he's gonna to talk to us all about the brand new 22 IDEX V3 we have here. Rob, how you doing? Fantastic, Jim. Hey, great to have you here. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm super pumped. This thing has not been shown to anybody yet, right? This, yeah. is, this is it. This is a effectively all nearly a world exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. Breaking <laughs> news here. <laughs> well, Ed, we just we got it out of the crate. We popped it on this table, and I think we should, before we do anything else, we should probably get this plastic off here. Yeah, a little bit. Let's little do bit. it. Uh, Rob, what are we looking at here? So this is the third version of our 22 IDEX, which is a production unit designed for high temperature plastics and uh, all kinds of stuff. Now, most of the parts that we see in peak at Ultimate PPSU are relatively small. So people ask, how do you get away with the lower chamber temperature? You're not all the way in the 200s at the TG. Well, the 200 Celsius bed and everything else actually makes it very, very possible for 80 plus percent of parts we've ever done. And then uh, on top of that, it's an absolute workhorse for anything from ABS to CF nylon, huge polycarbonate parts, all the specifications and chamber temperatures and everything make that a breeze. So this is really designed for uh, small businesses that are making parts and making money in these high-end functional end use materials. When they want something super strong or for a specific uh, application, we'll yep. say. You need to put it into space so it needs to re um, be radiation resistant and it can't be metallic. So, okay. <laughs> What do you use for that? Awesome. So we could use this to print parts for space. That's that's where I'm going with this. Yeah. So the first thing we notice is that it's fully enclosed and to do the high temp capabilities of this printer, it needs to be, right? Correct, absolutely. The entire frame is made out of solid steel. Now this is really good because as it gets to the higher temperatures, it doesn't shift around. So your frame is absolutely solid and it also helps keep all the heat in. And then of course it's insulated on the inside. <laughs> So it's probably pretty important to be insulated on the inside yeah, when you're getting internal chamber temps of what, 100 C? 100 C plus, yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. But it, what's cool is that the top here actually uh, pops open, it swivels open, and you can kind of see all the components inside. Really big door, swings open, got full access to your build plate. So I'm assuming we don't print like this. I mean, it may be PLA if you ever wanted to print PLA on this thing, but I have a feeling that's kind of like, if you have this, you're not gonna do that. You can. You could, you could. leave the door open because yeah. uh, PLA <laughs> likes did. cold air. It's know. like Motel 6, we'll leave the door open for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we got the enclosure, it's wide open. Now we can see inside. Let's check out some of the cool parts on the inside of this brand new printer. Absolutely. So now that we got it opened up, we could focus on all of the awesome things that make this printer what it is. Uh, Rob, can you tell me a little bit about the hot ends? It's it's IDEX, so there's two of them, but what are we looking at here? Right, so inside here, obviously, we've got the wire chains going to everything, and you'll notice the very top, we've got terminal blocks. Right. Now that, exactly, that eliminates all the proprietary or unique connectors. You can literally just take pins and put them in. Now that oh, nice. makes it so that, you know, on the Duet 3 system that we're running, you can literally throw anything on here you want. You want to put a laser on there, you can do it. It leaves that open and extensible. You want to upgrade the hot end, change the parts, no connectors to worry about. Down from there, you've got the LGX Pro extruder behind this fan. Now that's the fully metal internals designed for high temperature chambers, LGX Pro extruder. And that's from Bontech. From Bontech. Okay. So, cool. you know, take the best. We don't have to design all of our own things. Right. Take the stuff that works amazingly well and use it. And, you know, it's just a shortcut to being better, essentially. Right. Yeah. Why reinvent the wheel when you can take the wheel and make it better? Exactly. Back? These yeah. guys focus only on extruders. They've got the best extruders. Let's use that. Right. Uh, down from there, obviously, the cooling fan and shroud, and then the slice engineering copperhead hot end. Oh, it's a copperhead on these. It's a fantastic awesome. hot end. goes yeah. super high temp, and it also gives us the advantage of being able to match the Z offset of both heads very, very easily and quickly. Because they're the same, basically, the, the, the spec on them is so good that you can match the tolerance on each one. Pretty, right. Pretty easy. Not only that, but the uh, the way the heat break works is it slides up and down. So it's not a screw type oh. heat break. So you can physically adjust them. And then again, you touched on the that makes sense. The, yeah. The machining quality from Slice Engineering is yeah. absolutely second to none. It's absolutely beautiful, 
beautiful parts. So how high temp will the hot ends go on this? So they're set to go to 500 Celsius. <laughs> 500 yeah. C. Yep. That is crazy. Yep. I now, love it. Most printing occurs you know, below 450. So we've just got that extra gamut. If you want to crank the speed or you want to sure. crank the volume, et cetera, it can do that. So up to 500 C and the Bontex pushing plenty of plastic to do it. So it looks like your extruders sit on linear rails. Can you tell us a little bit about your motion system? Absolutely. You know, it was an interesting uh, challenge getting the right grades of metal so that all the coefficients of thermal expansion match. But on top of that, we're sitting on high temperature rails as well as high temperature Kevlar belts that are 12 millimeters wide. So extra thick, yeah, extra that's, robust. That's huge, yeah. <laughs> So you're sitting on linear rails, you got the, the Kevlar belts, and I, I see it. it's Core XY. It's not. It's oh, actually it's not? A, it's a, a lot of people think it's HBOT, but it's actually an entirely unique design. Oh. We, we actually have four motors driving the X and the Y, so one for each head, and then one for each side of the Y axis. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then we've got, obviously, three on the bed on the build plate and two on each motor for a total of nine motors that is absolutely crazy um and that explains why well the v2 version we saw at the rocky mountain rep rep festival was doing yeah. that like the crazy wave i call yes. it um yes. I, I that is that's crazy nine motors so we have nine motors it drives it we got kevlar belts we got linear rails uh, all this has to be leveled by something. Correct. Um, let's dive into that. Cool. So calibration, that's a huge thing, especially with IDEX machines. There's yeah. horror stories for years about people just getting the XY, getting the two tool heads to match, to print multi-material or even just support material. And you got to go through prints, you got to do all that stuff. We wanted to eliminate all that right. and make it one button press done. So when you get the machine, it actually comes without the build plate on. And you open it up, you connect to Wi-Fi, and you press calibrate. And that will take the nozzles and go into this little square here. And it will get the offset of exactly where the, each nozzle is. So now your X, Y on both heads is set and matched. And it will also go and get the Z offset. Now it gets the Z offset based on where the plate is. And then you put your build plate back in. Mm. And then the head will actually come over this one, will come over and grab this little probe. Oh, nice. And then it will go and it will touch the, the center and then do four corners. And then it will physically, mechanically level itself. And then it will go and it'll do full mesh bed leveling. And uh, so you'll be totally, totally set, perfect leveling every single time. And that's one button. One button. One button does it all. One button to calibrate everything, and then you put the build plate in, and you hit print, and then it automatically calibrates it automatically. everything out. That is crazy. So this thing is super precise, especially because you got to account, like you're talking about, for the thermal expansion. Right. I mean, anything that's going to be 100C in the build chamber, um, what's the bed go to? 200 Celsius. While we're talking about the bed, what is the build area in this thing? So it's 350 by 350 by 450 millimeters tall. So this thing is a monster. So big. standing next to this, we're on a table, but this, this is a big machine. Uh, so 350 by 350 by 400, and it keeps this thing like dang near level the whole time with essentially two clicks. So you, right. you do one and then you print. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. And the big, the big you know, challenge on the other ones was that you had to open the door and manually go in and turn knobs, letting the heat out, letting the heat oh, soak out, yeah. burning yourself. So this, <laughs> I this yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I had scars for years, man. We, uh, I crazy. can only imagine when you're reaching into a, you know, a super hot. Yeah. Let me just turn this knob. Yeah. So this does it all for you, and that's what the V3 is really about: is just yeah. ease of use. Really, really, just every little thing about this machine that's changed has made the user experience better, more streamlined, more efficient. Uh, cleaner, just more refined in every awesome. single way. So can you tell me a little bit about the inside of the chamber? I know we talked about it's insulated, right? It's fully yep. insulated, mm -hmm. but there's a lot going on here. Uh, what, are we, what are we looking at? <laughs> Definitely. So, you know, obviously you've got the chamber, which is heated actively by this heater down here. Okay. Now it's also got a circulating blower fan over on the side and then two chamber temperature sensors, which take the average. Now it's important because you get hot spots around the the chamber, sure. and so you want to make sure it's firstly fully up to heat, and then and then you know staying up to heat and even. So there's that, and then you've also got the build plate, which right. uh, Wait, you know, pull this out. Yeah, hundred percent. So let's yeah. 
So here we've got a, uh, you know, the build platform with the heater underneath it and then insulation uh, behind this metal plate. And this will go to 200 Celsius. Now I'll actually go a lot higher, but that'll be experimentation down the road. <laughs> um, and and so it's, it's super thick. It's super, I mean, it's, like, it's built like a tank. Wow. It's absolutely built. To, is, this, is this multiple pieces? Is it one piece? It is, it okay. is. So you've got the top plate, which is a cast aluminum, so that it doesn't okay. shift and change as it goes to temperature. And then underneath that, you've got a silicone heater. And then below that, you've got a bunch of insulation to keep all the heat in and pumping up sure. into the plate and into the chamber. And then, of course, you've got the shroud that just makes it look pretty and keeps everything nice and encapsulated beneath that. Now, with just the build plate temperature, you can heat the chamber like significantly. Sure. Uh, we've done some experimentation where this actually, we sent it to 300 Celsius and the chamber with just what? the bed went to 150 Celsius. Holy moly. So it's an open machine. We don't lock it down. If you put that number in on your control panel, It'll, it's gonna it'll, go there. it'll go there. You don't, you don't advertise that. I right? don't advertise yeah. that. <laughs> but it you know, there's, there's ratings with yeah, parts yeah. and whatnot, so we yeah. advertise what it's rated for. Uh, but yeah. a lot of our customers, and even us in the shop, we, we, yeah. like, we like pushing the well, limits. And, you know? I, and real quick, this appears to be carbon fiber. It is carbon exactly. fiber. It's just, it's just a, a bed of carbon fiber. It's a very special grade of carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber weave itself is unique, but the resin we've used took years of development and testing to actually land on this final resin so it survives at those 200 Celsius chambers. Sure. If you take a normal carbon fiber plate, throw it on there and try to you know crank it to 150, yeah. it'll start doing it'll start all warping kinds of crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, when I hit it here, it's it's... Just nothing like I've ever held before. This thing is crazy. And and when we were looking at it, uh, when we pulled it off here, I'm just like, that, that is like a, literally a full sheet of carbon fiber. Yeah. Well, probably many, many layers, but Correct. with a, with a special resin. And it just kind of slides on. Uh, yep. you get it, if I can actually see what I'm doing here. It just kind of slides on and, and holds on just like that, which is yep. super easy, super cool. Now, a quick point on that too. We've got four corners being held down. Now, even with this thick of carbon fiber, I've had simple polycarbonate, not even peak. Peak warps crazy, right. but polycarbonate, if you've ever printed that, also very warpy. Sure. I've seen entire plates warp just using our nano adhesive because it sticks to Whoa. the bed so well. But yeah. There's so much warping, it warps the whole carbon plate. So it's important to have it locked down on all corners. On all four corners. Well, what's next? What what can we check out? Let's Should we check out the electronics? Yeah, let's check it out. Let's show you what we got in the back. Let's do Running it. this whole system. All right, we spun the printer around and we're looking at the back of it. But before we get to the electronics, I noticed these uh, part, what is this? What are we looking at here? So these are actually ports for fume extraction. Oh, nice. So if you're in an office or in your home and you want to be safe with the VOCs and filter all the air inside because you're melting different types of plastics. Sure. Uh, high temp or low temp. It's just a peace of mind thing. So we have plenums that attach into here and you can attach any fume extraction system up to this machine. And it allows the temp to stay where it's supposed to stay. If you have the right fume extractor. Yeah, see that's the thing, you'll have to warm it up, but there are some coming out very soon that are designed for high nice. temp air. And then we just toss them back on like that and yep. they're good to go. Just keep them plugged. And, and you can use it without that, but right. it's just if you want to. Correct. Awesome. Correct. Yep. Well, this is the electronics area right in here. They're behind a couple of panels. Um, I, I think it's really cool because you got two doors that kind of swing open and like reveal everything you got going on here. And speaking of what you got going on, on here. The first thing I noticed is a Meanwell power supply, right? Gotta get sure. the Meanwell in there. Um, it looks like Duet, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on with the Duet? We're powering the motion system and everything through the open source Duet 3 main cool. boards and expansion boards. We even have a custom PCB in there that we use for some of the special features. And then of course, safety features. You mentioned the Meanwell power supply. Yep. Reliable, solid, just works. And then you've got obviously solid state relays, uh, a lot of other five volt power supplies, solid industrial breakers. This stuff yeah. is all designed to be up to code and up to spec for industrial manufacturers. It's one thing when you're putting a machine in a garage sure. and you can just plug it in and do whatever you want. Yeah. And when you're putting uh, 50 to 100 machines into an industrial facility with codes and everything yeah. else, it has to be built to a certain spec to just pass the, the quality check to get into the facility. One of my favorite things is it's just so accessible. It's not hiding under the machine. I don't have to flip it over. I don't have to unscrew panels. It makes this thing serviceable and in open source. I mean, you you said everything here is is using open source Duet. Correct. Um, which is very cool if someone really wanted to, you know. Well, 
mess around. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that touches on to the whole mindset creating this thing. Because we've always been business to business, yeah. mainly just because the materials are expensive and only really used in business. Right. So little things like having it accessible yeah. so that you can easily do any maintenance you need. That was one problem with a lot of the machines we use over the years is you have to disassemble the whole machine just right. to change a board or change a fuse. Here, that's not an issue. Uh, furthermore, if you're using the Duet and something burns out, they're all off-the-shelf parts, essentially. Right. It's not like only we make this board, only we supply this part, only right. we made this thing in a special and proprietary and unique. No, if you're a production environment and your machine goes down, you should be able to go, hopefully locally or online, right. or to us if you have a little extra time for us to ship you the part sure. and get back up and running. Because again, it's made for business and production. People who buy these machines are making money with the machines. Yeah. It's not just a fun machine. Yeah, yeah. This is designed for production. Production. And so you need to be able to, you know, every minute counts a lot of the time. If your machine's down, it's costing you money. It's not just not making you money, it's costing you money. Yeah. You got all the labor, all the facilities, everything else going. So you have to be able to service it and get it back up and running as fast as possible. That's definitely a good point. And and it's on the outside. We talked a little bit about yep. that before we yep. shot. Obviously, with the, the high temps inside the chamber, you would never want this inside. It's insulated on the inside and all the electronics on the outside, so they stay nice and cool. Right. And when you shut this, you have cutouts for your fans. You got everything very well ventilated back here to yeah. keep, keep it good. And even on that point, we went above and beyond. These motors, even though they're on the outside, they'll never see these temps. They're yeah. rated to 180 Celsius. <laughs> That's so awesome. we really wanted to make sure every part on here was gonna be stable, reliable, serviceable, and just work. And I do wanna point out, uh, I believe they're LDO motors. They are. They are. They so, are. so we got Bontech, we got Slice, we got LDO, we got um, Duet, mm -hmm. we got Meanwell, Yep. It's it's literally like picking through the community, grabbing the best parts of the best and tossing them into a, a really amazing machine. Yeah, I mean, after that's the awesome. patents expired, what, 10, 15 years ago, that's where all the development started yeah. and all the innovation. And so why not grab the best and, of the best? And I know that I could probably go to Jason and say, Jason, I need this motor. Um, you know, I would go to you first because yeah. you guys have awesome support here at Vision Miner. But, I, you know, if you had to, I need 10 of these for backups. Right. Who knows if they'll ever burn out, you know, probably yeah. never go through 10, but you could if you wanted to. 100%. Another thing I noticed on here is that there is a Wi-Fi antenna. Yep. And it's right there. Got an external antenna now. And the cool thing about this is the Duet 3 now, it has a removable Wi-Fi card. So for our, our military customers, we've got these in every, every single uh, military branch. And we would swap out the board on the last model sure. for DOD specifically. But now, if you're DOD or military, you can't have Wi-Fi. You literally just unplug it and you plug in via the integrated Ethernet. So that makes it really easy, really yeah. streamlined. And, and if you did buy one for your house or any other business you have out there and you're worried about the uh, Wi-Fi, just yeah. pop that chip out. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah. And, and again, I love how these back doors work. Really strong magnets. Yep. At well, the the, the, the Duet boards, too, as a brand, are manufactured in UK. So that's, oh. a, that's a whole other layer of safety that's, for our military. That's very cool. Yeah. So what I noticed on the front here is that there's no screen. There's no touch screen, no analog screen, no anything. I got a safety switch down here, um, but that's it. So mm -hmm. why is that? So there's a lot of options for screens. What's one thing that everybody has on their person at any time? That's true. If you're connected to the same network, you can plug in the IP and have all your controls. Or you can have a tablet that you slap on here with a magnet. Or what we do mostly in shop is we have actual desktop computers. Okay. And what this does is, you know, having a screen, you're usually limited in functionality. Sure. Uh, whereas the Duet web control interface has everything above yeah. and beyond what you could need. And so accessing that from any device or even just getting a cheap tablet, if you really want to have a screen sure. on here, then you can just use a magnet and attach it to it. Uh, there is sure. optional Duet. Duet has their panel do 7i as well, so that's another option for a fully integrated uh, sure. screen. Sure, sure. Uh, but, but normally yeah. you would just basically send a file to it, yeah. and you'd monitor it from a computer somewhere. And if you had a company where there's 20 of these, exactly. you, I mean, you're not going to go look at every screen and right. wait for your prints to be done anyway. So that that's actually pretty cool. I love the badge he did up here. The, the uh, serial number badge is really cool. Yep. Uh, they're actually named. Right there. I think this one yep. says Jim on it. No, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it says Adrian on there, but I, I was hoping it said Jim. Yeah, I, yeah. Let me see There's your Sharpie. A Jim out there you got a Sharpie over yeah. there? Um, yeah. But 
the other thing that I thought was really cool that we talked about is all the little parts that, um, not this one specifically, that's metal, but there are some 3D printed parts on here. Uh, I think this might be one of them. Yes. And they're all printed in nylon carbon fiber. Correct. Right? But the files are out there. So yeah. if one of those yeah. broke, I could print another one. Right. Uh, you could change colors if you wanted to, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, not saying that you're going to want to on this machine, but if I'm going to manufacture, I could rip this part very quickly on this machine and have that back and right. ready to go. So yeah, so that's really cool that you guys are putting the files out there for people. Right. I think that um, it's very smart and we don't have to come to you. It's not proprietary. Right. You guys are saying like, listen, if it breaks, here's the part that you or, can print it. Or if you want to modify it. Hey, I that's want true. this to work differently. I want to change something on it. There's maybe 15, maybe 20 3D printed parts on the whole machine. Sure. And they're all available, all available for nice. modification, that's improvement, really cool. whatever you want. And, and, and like normally when I think industrial printers, I don't think open source. I'm not gonna lie. I think mm -hmm. like this is locked down. I have to go to the company. I have to buy the parts. It, it, you're you're locked into a contract with them where you can't touch anything, yeah. which is you know might be the case with contracts. I don't know how you guys work. That's not my side of things. But the thing is though that you're putting it out there. You're using all the companies we already use in our community, um, and and you're making a machine that is just one beast of a machine. You know, uh, you know, what I've found is that the engineers at Lockheed Martin or NASA or Northrop or Airbus, the ones that are in 3D printing usually have a couple printers at home. And sure. so when they call, they're asking, hey, yeah, can I do this to it? Can I do that to it? Yeah, I got three of these and I've done that. Yeah. And we're like, dude, it's open, man. You can, and they're like, oh, thank God. You know, because they're <laughs> yeah. used to buying these, you know, right. the several hundred thousand dollar machines right. that give you no options and you're locked into expensive materials. And, and there's all this, this stuff. You got to wait three weeks for service. So it's down, yeah. you're out. And we just wanted to avoid all that. Because right. We've been in manufacturing for many years and we've built this machine the way we would want to receive it. And that's what the V3 is about. Way it's more so. user friendly and that's mm -hmm. where you guys went with this model. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit about the screen and you said there's one thing else yeah. you wanted to mention. You know, one comment is like, well, what if I go, how do I know where the machine's at? Shouldn't it have, you know, status or something? One thing we've done is included RGB LEDs inside the chamber. Mm. So you get status colors as it's going through each part of the print. That's so if, cool. it, if it's ready to go, you know, it's green or blue. And then as it's printing, it changes color. And then when it's done, it changes color. And so you can, at a quick glance, if you have a fleet of these in your warehouse, uh, you can look and see, oh, there's three machines over there that have something that need something. Those four are ready to go. And these, yeah. these four are printing. And, and my guess is most people that do this have a camera in that room or that area anyway. Yeah. Easy. So I'd pop open a camera. Oh, there's there's five prints that are done. We need to go grab them and start new ones. Mm -hmm. That's actually very smart. I like that idea. And and I noticed that the LEDs. Um, I can't pop the top open because I'm a little close. But the LEDs are like along the sides in mm -hmm. here too, which is really cool. Yeah. So you get awesome. Good lighting. You can see your first layer as it goes down. You can see everything. Something we didn't touch on as well. There is a nice solid. Um, seal right here yeah, too. Yeah. So they, I lost the word seal for some reason. But yeah, there's a nice solid seal in here that, that kind of seals everything in. Man, this thing is just very well-rounded. It's, it's, there's no other word to use in my mind than a beast. It is a beast of a machine. So uh, man, I really appreciate you showing me this. I, there's probably another two hours of content that we could have filmed. Yeah, there will uh, be. We're gonna get some really cool shots. We're gonna get some uh, printing shots and stuff. Obviously, we can't film that on this brand new one because we didn't even plug it in yet, but we will get some shots of this thing printing, um, and hopefully you guys got some really cool info on this brand new 22 IDEX V3 right here from Vision Miner. And if you guys have any ideas, or applications, or projects for these crazy mm. high temp materials, that's something we can definitely work together and bring to life. So leave them in the comments down below. That's a good idea. And uh, let us know what you want to see printed, whether it's yeah. high temp, low temp, cool, whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, if I had one of these at my house, right? If I had these in, in the studio, what would you like to see me print with one of these? I know I had flamethrower, so don't use that one. That one's already taken. But what else? Uh, airplane parts. We talked uh, in, in another video, we talked about uh, helicopter parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is it? Let me know what you want to see printed in this thing because I really want one of these to say, Jim, this thing needs to live in my house. <laughs> Rob, yeah. thank you so much, man. Yeah. I really Jim. appreciate you having me come out. Ah, this this has been uh, literally one of the coolest machines I've ever had the pleasure to take a look at. I've never seen a machine uh, in front of me that would do like 500C and, and use uh, 
local parts too. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yep. Thank you so much for having me out, man. I really appreciate it. it. And don't forget to check out the Vision Miner website, visionminer.com, right? For the 22 IDEX V3, this is the third version. So check out that V3. And uh, if you need one, hit up Rob, right? We're here to help. <laughs> I got a whole team and we cross train just about everybody. We're, we're old school in the way that we actually answer the phone. And we're not just gonna sell you something. We gotta make sure that it's gonna work for what you're using it for. You're getting the right thing. You're not just spending a bunch of money. So yeah. we're actually gonna care about you and, and relationships are really what we're founded on. That's why we have so many repeat customers and, awesome. and just great reviews. You can check out yeah. our reviews, you know? Yeah. Check out the reviews. If you have any questions, you can always call too. Uh, all that information is on their website. Um, I'll give you Rob's personal cell phone. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Rob, thanks, man. I appreciate it. We're going to do a Joel high five out of here. Joel, that was for you. And uh, everybody else there, I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comments what you loved. And if you haven't checked out the tour video kind of walk through a project here at, at Vision Miner, you really should do that by checking out this video right here.